so I think you probably noticed that the symbol of Spark Camp is the campfire. Uh, that wonderful metaphor for storytelling and intimate conversation that is old is civilization itself. Well, I want to talk about fire in the real sense, that, that process of rapid oxidization that is true fire, right? That, that, uh, that, that source of tremendous inspiration, passion, um, heat, uh, that dangerous servant, that fearsome master that is fire itself. Enough of the fancy words. The truth is I love fire and I love building fires. And on this sliver of beach in Northern California, I have over the last decade with friends and coworkers built various fires, increasingly complex fires along the way, chainsaws became involved and we'd spend a day and sometimes longer than a day building a complex fire and then spend that evening around the fire cracking wise telling lies, sharing our hopes and dreams. All of those wonderful things that make fires so wonderful and beach fires so particularly so. Several years ago, actually, we were building one of these fires and it took us a full day and it was a very large one. It was several large towers, the highest as high as 10, 12 feet. Spent all day doing it and then later that evening burned it and it was fully engulfed, you'll see it here begin to see it here in a second and we were sitting on the fire and and really inebriated in a sense with self-satisfaction and the sheer bliss of the time and space of that moment uh, and then out of the gloaming comes a park ranger <laughs> from the state park that's just across the the river from our property and he walks up to the fire and he looks at me and he looks at the fire and he looks back at me and he says nice fire he says but I have to tell you, one of your neighbors has called the fire department and reported a structure fire on the beach. And I said, structure fire on the beach, you can see what it is, and it's completely legal, and we've got buckets, and we've got shovels, and it's all safe and properly done and taken care of. And he says, you're absolutely right, but nonetheless, the fire department is on the way. And sure enough, two minutes later, I turn around, and there are 15 firemen and women in full battle regalia coming down the 86 steps from the house above to our beach below. Men and women who got out of their cozy beds from a volunteer fire department to deal with this pyromaniacal maniac on the beach that is me. And the captain of the brigade comes up to me and he looks at the fire and he looks at me and he says, nice fire. He says, but I have one question to ask, just one question, and it is this, what is the purpose of your fire? Is it a warming fire or is it a ceremonial fire? And my wife is tugging at my sleeve like, think about this, think about this. And I look up at the heavens and the Milky Way is popping out of the sky and I say, it's obviously a ceremonial fire. And he says, good answer. Good answer. If you had said a warming fire, I was going to tell either by protocol, either you'd have to put the fire out or we'll put it out for you. But since it's a ceremonial fire, it is entirely within your rights. Have a good evening. <laughs> and this young 16 year old, the son of some friends of ours who was there, comes up to me and he says, This was the greatest day of my life. <laughs> and of course, that's what this is all about. It was about creating memories. And so from that point, we went on and over the years created more fires, more friends came up, co-workers. I did off-sites for Google Teams up on the beach and we'd build ever fabulous fires and then enjoy the burning in the evenings. And a year or so ago, I sent out a, I did a post of one of my fires and a, and a friend commented on it. He says, Richard, he says, what are you trying to do? Build fires that can be seen from space? And I went, whoa, interesting. <laughs> and since this guy is an executive at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, I said, well, you tell me, can it be seen from space? And he said, well, I don't know, but I'll talk to our scientists and get back at you. And so he does. A few days later, he sends me an email. And he says, well, our scientists looked at it and said, no, your fire can't be seen from space. But, and I don't re can recommend you do this, he said, but, but, if it were 10x bigger, it might be. And it went 10x, 10x. I work at Google, Larry Page is constantly saying, be audacious, think big, think 10x. And so that's indeed what we do. We keep trying to figure out is how do we build bigger and more interesting fires and bring more people to the occasion and bring more people to hang around the fires and share thoughts, share their dreams, have a great time, create a great experience. So why do we do this? And someone said to me, they say, like, why do you do this? Why do you spend all day building these things and then you burn them? You know, what's the lesson in all this? And I say, well, 
What is the lesson in all this? And I didn't really thought about it that way. One is that life is a journey, and it's a long journey. And I think it's really important for all of us, because bad memories have a way of self-creating, that we need to proactively find the good memories, proactively find ways to get satisfaction in our jobs, in our careers along the way. And as we take from an organizational sense, build organizations, because organizations are also long journeys. How do we imbue those organizations with a sense that it is a journey and that you can find satisfaction along the way? And with every incremental effort, whether it succeeds or fails, there should be satisfaction, whether that effort ends up in a pile of ashes or an eternal flame. Thank you. Wow.